When you learn these reactions, you really want to know them in two directions. You want to know, oh yeah, if I pour this stuff together, then I'll end up with this other thing. So that's, you sort of want to know them in the forward direction. But you also want to know them in the reverse direction. You want to be able to see a molecule and say, oh, I can make that by doing this other thing. And that's what this, that's what exercise 1019 is trying to get you to do. It's trying to get you to think about acid catalyzed hydration, but in the reverse direction. It says, if you want to prepare this ketone, what alkyne would you need in order to do acid catalyzed hydration to make this? So really, a, a sort of lesson from this exercise is, anytime you see an alkyne, uh, anytime you see a ketone, think, oh, I can make that from an alkyne. All I'd have to do is acid catalyzed hydration. And you'll see that this habit of thinking, this ability to think backwards, will be really useful when you get to multi-step synthesis. So what alkyne would you use? Now, you see that the double bond to the oxygen is here. And so really, you could either have the triple bond going to the left or the right. But let's think about those two cases and think about which one would be more efficient? So remember, you get this when you do acid catalyzed hydration on an alkyne. The oxygen is ultimately coming from the water. And you do some proton transfers in order to get this to look like this. So let's redraw the molecule. Now at first we can just redraw it as the zigzag because it's the easier thing to do. But um, after we draw these triple bonds in, we will want to redraw them as linear. Now you know the oxygen added here, so that means that this carbon must have been involved in the, in the triple bond. So the triple bond could have either been to the left or it could have been to the right of that carbon. So which one would you want? Which alkyne would you want to use? If you did acid catalyzed hydration on this carbon on this carbon molecule on the left notice that both of these carbons are secondary and I'm watch out I, this is drawn as a zigzag but really it should be linear notice that both of these carbons are secondary which means that the double bond will go equally on both of them that means that you'd only get this final product some of the time other times you would get the ketone on the other carbon, this carbon here. Compare that with this molecule over here. That's a terminal alkyne, and again, this is going to be linear when we draw the final product. I'm just drawing this as a sort of brainstorming rough draft. In this case, we have carbons with different, uh, with, that are differently substituted. This carbon here is secondary, and this carbon is primary. Well, we know that this acid catalyzed hydration is Markovnikov addition. That means the hydrogen is going to go to the less substituted carbon and the oxygen is going to go to the more substituted carbon. If we use this alkyne, then we would get double bond to the oxygen on the more substituted carbon 100% of the time. And so this is the correct answer on the right because it gives you the more efficient product. So just to illustrate, So if we use this, al this alkyne on the left, sometimes we would get the double bond to the oxygen where we want it, but other times we would get it where we don't want it. Whereas if we use the alkyne on the right, the double bond to the oxygen will always go to the more substituted position, it will always go where we want it. And so the one on the right is more efficient, and so that's the correct answer. Now, we have to clean this up a little bit. So. I'm going to get rid of this other thing we were thinking of, and when I draw this, this is technically incorrectly drawn right now. This is not the correct answer. You'd want to redraw that alkyne as a linear. So notice you have one, two, three, four, five. We have one, two, three, four, five. So the true correct answer is 
this one here. <clears throat> if you take that alkyne and you treat it with water, sulfuric acid, and mercuric sulfate, it would turn into this ketone. Now, there's, a rest, there's an arrow called a retrosynthetic arrow, and it has sort of two lines and just one weird sort of long head like that. And what that means is we, I can go back, I can, I can, if I had this molecule, I could make this. So it's sort of like thinking backwards. Okay, so much for that. Let's try that with another one. And the idea here is really similar. We see, let's copy this carbon chain. We have a double bond to the oxygen on this third carbon here. And because that oxygen added there, we know that we have to have the triple bond connected to that. But it, be, it could theoretically be connected to it in either direction. And I'm just going to rough draft here. Technically, these still have the zigzags, but technically these triple bonds should be linear. But this is just a rough draft. I'm going to draw it. The triple bond could go to the right, or it could go to the left of that third carbon. Theoretically. Now, which one gives you the right product, the more efficient product. Notice if this, so in either case, both of the carbons in the triple bond are equally substituted. Oops. So this carbon is secondary, this carbon is secondary, this carbon is secondary, this carbon is secondary. So either way, we're going to get a mixture of two products, but let's look carefully at those two products. Okay, so on the one hand, you could have the double bond to the oxygen add on the right here. Or, equally likely, you could have it add on the left, because they're equally substituted. In this other case, you could have it add on the left, or you could have the double bond to the oxygen go on the right. Excuse me, now notice here, these are two different products. This double bond to the oxygen is right next to the edge, and this one is more in the middle. So those truly are two different products. But notice that in this other example, these are actually the same molecule, because our original alkyne was symmetrical. And so we would want to use this alkyne to make this ketone because it will only give us one product. So we'll get a much more efficient reaction than with this one. We would get a mixture of products, which would be very inefficient. So I'm going to get rid of those. And this is going to be our alkyne that we want. I just have to redraw it. So technically, this is incorrectly drawn right now. I'm going to take that triple bond, straight line, straight line. <clears throat> So here, one, two, three, four, five, six. Here I have three and four. I've drawn two and five. So I just have to draw six and one. So this is incorrect. Do not draw these zigzagging triple bonds. It misrepresents the shape of the molecule, and the shape of the molecule is crucial in, 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 in order to understand what type of environments a molecule will fit into and where it will react. So make sure you redraw the alkyne as a linear molecule once you know which alkyne you get. And so because this was symmetrical, it would only give us one product, and that was the product that we wanted here. So we're sort of thinking backwards. How could I make this ketone? I could take this alkyne and I could treat it with water, sulfuric acid, and mercuric sulfate. All right, one last one for this exercise. Now here, 
we see our molecule, let me just copy this down, we see our molecule, and we see that the double bond to the oxygen is on this carbon here. And that means that the triple bond would has to be connected to that carbon. Now, you could, you could try at first to draw that going to the left. But take a second to notice how many bonds are on this carbon here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six bonds. There are 12 atoms, uh, 12 electrons around that carbon. That's not a possible possibility. So the triple bond has to be going in the other direction, toward the end. There's only one possibility. Now, you don't want to leave it like this. This triple bond needs to be linear. So you would redraw this. Like that. So we have two carbons on this sort of chain. Going outside, we have two carbons on that chain, outside of the ring. So you wouldn't have this product. The product you would want to draw the final answer for this is this molecule here. If you take that and treat it with water, sulfuric acid, and mercuric sulfate, then you would end up with the ketone that we wanted in the very beginning. So notice how in this in this in these exercises we sort of start with the product and we think how can I make that? We go backwards and we think okay, this is the alkyne we would need. So the general procedure here is where you have the double bond to the oxygen, draw triple bonds on either side and think about which triple bond gives you the more efficient product or the or the only correct product and make sure you draw that triple bond as a linear